welcome to the Dose of Courage podcast. I'm your host, Courage Molina, Chief Courage Crusader. I'm here to encourage, challenge, and equip you to become bolder, more confident, and courageous enough to be who God has called you to be, do what God has called you to do, and take possession of everything he said you could have. Courage Crusaders, let's go. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Courage Mastermind. The Courage Mastermind is my 12-week coaching program. It is designed to help you discover your true self so you can become more confident, um, to help you let go of past mistakes so you can walk in the forgiveness that's already yours. This program is going to help you to use your faith so that you can actually move mountains instead of pebbles (laughs) and step into the life that God has called you for. It's going to help you to improve your relationships so you can have the support that you deserve. You are going to grow personally and spiritually so you can become the woman you were always meant to be and live the life you truly desire. Get out of that rut that you've been in. It's time. You have been there too long. It is time for you to let go of the pain that you're holding on to. It It's meant to prepare you for your purpose. It was never meant to be your final destination. I just want you to ask yourself this question. Do you have the confidence and the courage to go after the life you truly want to live? Be honest. If not, let's get on a call and get you enrolled in the program today. Bitly slash Courage Mastermind so that we can get you to start taking the steps toward living the life that you've always wanted to live. What's up? Welcome y'all back to the podcast. So excited that y'all are here. If this is your first time, hey, so glad that you're here. Uh, Go ahead and subscribe. It's an amazing podcast. You won't regret it. Send a quick text message to the person who shared this podcast with you. Say thank you. You hooked me up. And if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you've been rocking with me. Thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate you guys sharing the podcast, tagging me on Instagram. First of all, I feel like a celebrity when I see myself tagged on Instagram. I love the stuff that you're saying in the DMs. Um, And go ahead and give it a rating, give it a five star rating and write a short review on whatever platform you use to listen to the podcast. So if it's iTunes, you can leave a five star review there. If it's Spotify, I don't think you can leave a review on Spotify, but maybe I know that you can definitely do uh, leave comments and things like that on uh, Podbean. So just check out how you can continue to support and let me know that you've loved this podcast this episode or all of the episodes. All right. Listen, this podcast has been getting better and better. Okay. Because let me just tell you the first episode I did of the first podcast I ever did was so rough. Y'all I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm, I'm trying to tell you it was real rough. You know, <laughs> it was more about getting it done than it was anything else. And so, you know, sometimes it's like that. I think it's important for us to be honest with ourselves, like with who we are and where we are. I know that that's not always the case. What, what happens is like over time, you know, we get these filters put in. People tell us what we can and can't say or we're kind of taught because as kids, kids really say, listen, these kids will tell you the truth. Okay. They will tell you the truth. And it's because they haven't gotten their filtration system down yet. So they just say whatever. I have a a close friend. I remember her calling me when her kids were younger. And one of her boys drew a picture of her. (laughs) And he drew like her face. And she sent me a picture of it. And it had like eyes and eyebrows and, um, you know, lashes and lips. (laughs) And it had the shaded area above her lip. <laughs> so she said, she asked him, what is this? What is this on my lip right here? And he said, it's your mustache. <laughs> That's so funny. And she was like, boy, I don't have a mustache. Girls don't have a mustache. And he was like, uh-huh. And he got up and pointed to the hair on her lip. <laughs> That's like, that's so 
funny. Now, listen, I get that that might be rude, but he was probably like four or five. He wasn't old enough to know that, you know, uh, mustaches are not necessarily seen as a complimentary item on a woman's face. You know, she said it had been a while since she got the wax. So, you know, he just drew her. He was just being honest, you know. <laughs> He hadn't gotten his filter put in yet. And so that's just what happens, though, you know. And so what we start to do is we start to tell kids what they can and can't say. You know, we learn as we grow up that there are things that are not okay to say, like, oh, don't say that. But the problem is sometimes we teach them to lie. Right. So telling somebody they look nice when they don't really look nice or saying that you love somebody's cooking just because it's the polite thing to do. And so. You know, we kind of grow up knowing that we should be kinder to other people. But it's about the filter. Part of that problem, one, is that it's the sense of if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. I think that's much more important than teaching them to lie and say something tastes good or look good when it don't. Because then we wonder why they lie about other things. You know, then we get into these situations where as adults, um, it's difficult to have um, critical conversations because all we've ever heard from nice people are nice things. And anything that wasn't nice, we heard from somebody that we decided wasn't nice, right? So only mean people say those things, right? So you either want to be a mean person or you want to be a nice person. And then you say nice things and then we can't take, you know, the truth. Then it's difficult for us to take the truth when we hear it. But I think a more dangerous thing than that is that we're only taught, you know, it's like a one-way filtration system. We're only taught to say nice things and to look for the positive things or to be silent as it relates to other people. But when it comes to how we talk about and to ourselves, we're actually taught the reverse. So when I'm talking to somebody, it is important for me to be extra nice, extra sweet, for me not to want to hurt their feelings, uh, for me to want to encourage them, even if, you know, even if it means I have to use flattery, or even if it means I'm not going to be able to be 100% honest, that is preferred, expected, and taught, right, uh, on the way out. But on the way in, when I'm talking about how I see myself, and when I'm talking about what I've done and what I've accomplished, we are taught to downplay things, because we don't want to be seen as proud. We want to be seen as humble. Um, we don't want to be seen as conceited. So when I say that I'm great at something, I'm now seen as a person who is conceited or a person who's in competition or too, or thinks too highly of themselves. So the filtration system that we have is all messed up. We are taught to be nice to those around us. We are not necessarily taught to be nice to ourselves, Right. So think about that for a second. Think about the filtration system that you use when you talk to and about other people, right? Somebody draws a picture for you. It's a little kid. What do you say? Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous. Even if it's not that good, you still say it. And some of you mothers are putting it up on the fridge. I wasn't really putting that kind of stuff up on the fridge. <laughs> but you know, other mothers do. Hey, that's cool, right? That's, that's what we're taught to do. I guess I kind of always went against the grain a little bit. Uh, in that area anyway. But that's what we're taught to do. So think about how you speak to other people, how you talk about them, the things that you say, how you encourage them, how you can overlook their shortcomings, especially if it's somebody you love, especially if it's somebody that you really like. You're able to see the positive things in them and you downplay, sometimes we downplay to a fault, the negative things, right? But do you use that same filtration system when you're talking to yourself? I'm talking about the thoughts, not necessarily what you say out loud about yourself, not the confidence that we sometimes pretend to have when we're in certain groups and we're in certain rooms. I mean, when you're in a room by yourself and you have your own thoughts that are keeping you company, what are you saying about yourself? When you started to do something and it didn't work out or things didn't go the way you had planned, what are you saying about yourself? When you've worked out all week long and then you get on the scale and the number hasn't moved or the number has gone up or you've been in quarantine all this time and you've been wearing sweatpants and today you decided to put on jeans and they didn't zip up, what did you say to yourself in that moment? Did you say to yourself what you would have said to your best friend? Well, okay, that's what I'm talking about right there. You, hear, you see how I did that? Like, I know y'all are talking back to me. I know y'all are talking back to me. That's why I love y'all. This is the thing. You have, to, you have to recognize that 
the negative things that you believe to be true about yourself are really based on the filter that you have, right? So I'm really learning to speak the truth all the time. I'm learning to tell the truth all the time. And I've learned that in my telling of the truth, especially when I'm speaking about myself, it makes people uncomfortable. It makes people very uncomfortable. And it's because so many of us were given the same, it was like we were given the same factory filtration system, right? And what we have to do is reset, remove, listen, not reset, forget that reset, remove the filtration system that has been given to us from the world, from the media, from social media, from entertainment, from your mama, your cousins. Yes, mamas, cousins, aunties, daddies. I'm coming for you too. I love y'all. But we just got to do better. So here we go. Here we go. Those filtration systems, the things that told you to play small or it wasn't, the competition wasn't good, like all of those things, people made you feel like you couldn't do this or you couldn't do that or it wasn't okay for you to say those things. We change in that filtration system right now. We're going to change out that one and replace it with the word. Word of God. Right. How do how do I know that my filtration system is out of whack? Well, one, you find it if you're uncomfortable with taking compliments. Getting a compliment from somebody makes you uncomfortable. Someone says that they love your skirt. They love your dress. You look beautiful. You downplay it. You can feel how uncomfortable you are. Even if you don't show it, there is something there's a feeling that goes through your body and you're uncomfortable. Right? When somebody gives you a compliment, um, you're uncomfortable with sharing your wins. So somebody said, oh, did you have a great week this week? What are some of your wins? And you are, you know, you're shying away from that. It's because of the filtration system that you have. Sharing my wins, speaking the truth, telling the truth about how I killed it this week. I don't want people to think I'm X, Y, Z. And so the filtration system that I have says that I have to downplay my accomplishments. But we're going to work on changing your filter. And, and so what does that look like? It really looks like us just making the decision. I've made the decision, so I'm going to invite you to join me. Um, it really starts with you making the decision, making the decision to start speaking the truth about who you are and who God has called you to be. Not the truth according to the world's um, filtration system. Not the truth according to what the world has said to you. What your family has said to you. What society, what the beauty industry is saying. Mm -mm, not that. The truth based on what God's word said about you. So can you start speaking to yourself and speaking about yourself in a way that's in alignment with God's word. Can you start speaking about your worthiness to yourself and about yourself? Can you get a better assessment of your skills and your talents and your gifting and stop downplaying them like you're not a great artist? No, you are an amazing artist. You have a beautiful voice. You are made for this thing that you want to do. You are killing it in school right now. You're killing it in writing this book. You're, in a, you're a phenomenal speaker. You know that to be true because it's who God has created you to be, because it's the skills and the gifts and the talents that God has poured on you, poured in you so that you can live out his purpose for your life. And God didn't call us to be mediocre. So how then can my assessment of myself be one of mediocrity? No, it's a lot. If you say I'm not hot, you're lying. It's just a lot. When I say I'm not hot, I'm lying. Anytime I say anything less than remarkable, I'm beautiful, I am loved, I am talented, I was made for this, anything less than that is a lie. It's the, and I know some of you are like, oh, but what about this? It's funny how... We are uncomfortable with sharing the truth of God's word about ourselves because it seems one-sided, right? So I have a shirt that says, I'm really dope. I know I've talked about that shirt before um, because it, I am really dope. It's true. But when I wear that shirt, on the days that I wear that shirt, 
I have to give myself a pep talk. <laughs> yes, Courage Molina, Chief Courage Crusader. When I wear that shirt, I have to give myself a pep talk. And the reason I have to give myself a pep talk is because we've all been taught that it is not okay for us to have that type of confidence. It's not okay for us to say those things about ourselves. We are to have this sense of humility. That's not humility for the record. You know, being reminded of my shortcomings and that I'm not perfect, that's not humility. That's not, that's crap is what that is. Humility is in how I treat other people. It's not in seeing myself as less than. That is not humility, friend. <laughs> that is, that is crap. I'm saying it's crap and I mean it. That's not humility. Being reminded of my shortcomings, being reminded of the things that I'm not good at. Um, I'm married to Puerto Rican. My husband is Puerto Rican. Hey, boo. Not that he's listening. Um, but <laughs> I cannot make rice, y'all. Okay? I cannot make rice. It's sad, but it's true. So I have a rice maker now. But um, if you are Puerto Rican or if you know Puerto Ricans, you know, you are all rolling your eyes and going, but that's not real. <laughs> Using a rice maker, that'll count. She cheated. And I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. And I can, but I can cook though. I get it. You probably don't think I can cook because I can't cook rice, but I promise you I can cook. Like your girl is skilled. Do you understand what I'm telling you? In the kitchen, I can cook. I will surprise you in that thing. Okay. There was an any, I feel like, oh, I could cook anything. If you give me the recipe, I ain't going to be beat by it. I could probably do it. Right. That's how I feel. I'm great at cooking, but I can't cook rice, you know? And so every once in a while, <laughs> back in the day, before I got the rice cooker, I would say like, I would be telling somebody how good I can cook or telling somebody about something. And I can hear this Puerto Rican dude in the background talking about, yeah, but you can't make rice. And I would be like, why are you trying to bring out the one thing I can't do? <laughs> like the one thing I can't cook is rice. And it was all like in joking, right? He wasn't trying to come for me. It's all like in joking. But he would just always remind me of this one thing I can't cook, which is the rice. And I would just laugh and be like, you know, that one thing is what keeps me from being perfect. So you're welcome. <laughs> That's God's way of making sure I'm not perfect because it would be unfair to the rest of the world. So Yep, you're welcome. That's why I can't cook rice. We think that when people are only talking about the positive side of who they are and their skills and their gifting, when we say positive things about ourselves and we don't include the bad and the ugly, that somehow we're being less than honest. I don't know what adult thinks that anybody is perfect. I mean, I know there are people that suffer from uh, mental health issues and things like that where, and I'm not even joking, where they cannot discern or they don't see like uh, just these nuances that you see in communication. So they can't tell that somebody is not being facetious, right? They don't know when somebody's being sarcastic. They can't read that. Outside of that, for the rest of you, you know everybody is not perfect. This is not news to you. And nobody thinks you're perfect. Maybe your kids or something, I don't know. But for the most part, don't ain't nobody out here thinking you perfect. So you don't need to, we don't need to lead with the negativity is what I'm saying to you. I don't need to lead, lead with what I'm not good at. Yes, it might come up in conversation. I'm, I don't lie about being able to cook rice. I can't cook rice, but I also don't lead with that. I don't, I don't think that you think I'm perfect. I mean, if you do, I feel like that's your, that's your bad. I feel like legit, that's your bad. I feel like that's your bad. You are an adult. People are not perfect. You know that. Nobody thinks you're perfect. So you don't need to remind them or always start with the negativity. But we've kind of been taught that. But if I only share my good qualities with you, if I only share my strengths with you, then that somehow implies that I'm out of touch with who I am or somehow implies that I'm not being honest and I'm not speaking the truth. But saying the negative things doesn't make the true things less true. It just pulls the focus away. And so in this season, I, for one, am learning to speak the truth about myself and to myself 80% of the time. Maybe the other 20%, it's a bad day, it's a bad week. 
maybe there's some assessment. And I'm not saying to ignore the fact that you don't do things well or to ignore the fact that there are areas that you need growth. But I'm saying, can we learn to speak the truth that's in alignment with God's word and stop downplaying who we are and stop allowing other people to downplay who we are? I need to walk around pretending like I'm not skilled, like I'm not gifted or talented. Like that makes no sense. It's also not honest. You're lying. <laughs> you are lying when you downplay your writing skills. You're lying when you're downplaying what an amazing organizer you are. You're not being honest. So let these folks out here trying to make you feel like you can't say how great you are at something have you out here in these streets lying? You are lying when you, you know, downplay how hospitable you are. Huh? Or what a great cleaner you are. Like some people, they can just get into a room and see how it needs to be organized and know what needs to be done to clean it and to get that stain up and to do this. When you pretend like that's not your superpower, you are lying. When I pretend like I wasn't made to speak, I am lying. When I walk into a room and I behave as if I don't have a right to be there or I don't deserve to be there, I am lying. Lies. And so what I'm doing in this season is learning to tell the truth. Are you struggling with this? Is this an area that you've been struggling? And it's certainly an area that I struggled in uh, once God started like answering my prayers and opening doors, I'm like, oh, God, open this door and open that door. And they started opening doors and I started going into rooms uh, where people were much more accomplished than me. Um, people who were extremely successful in many areas of their lives. Um, I started to like, I started lying to myself, lying to myself. Oh, I don't belong here. I don't have a right to be here. They're going to find out some, they're going to find out that I'm not supposed to be in here. This imposter syndrome, right? Like that kind of thing. No, I got to stop lying. That's why I have the shirt. The shirt is a reminder. Like don't go out into this world pretending like you're not dope. You dope. Stop it. Stop it right now. Are you struggling with this? Is this an area that you're struggling in? Are you struggling to tell the truth? Are you lying about how amazing you are and how worthy you are and how beautiful you are, how loved you are? Anytime you're saying to yourself that you are unloved or unwanted, you're lying. Because God loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you. Every time you look in the mirror and you say that you are ugly or you are not pretty or you are not gorgeous, anytime you say something like that, you are lying. You are made in the image of God. God said that you are a marvelous work. You're a masterpiece. You are a piece made by the master. Anytime you're in a space that God has put you in, whether it's in leadership or in business, God has blessed you with, you know, having children, you're a mom, however you came to be one, you're a wife, and you are walking around like, oh, I'm not a good wife, or I was, you know, I can't be a good wife, or I don't deserve, you're lying. It's not true. Stop lying. No. But sometimes, you know, it's easier to tell the lie than it is to tell the truth. And, it's, and I mean when it's something positive. It's easier for me to tell people that I have, that I struggle with anger. It's easier for me to tell people about my past and how I used to fight. It's easier to tell people about that than it is to tell them that I was made to teach Bible. One of the best Bible teachers you will ever have the pleasure of learning from. And that's just real. That is uncomfortable. I'm thinking right now, what are they going to think when they hear that line? Now, y'all know I'm not editing it out. But I'm honestly more comfortable with that. I'm honestly more comfortable with you know, talking about the shortcomings that I see in myself as it relates to how I am um, as a woman, as a wife, than I am with telling you how I kill it and how he is blessed beyond measure to have me as his rib, flesh in his flesh, his wife. Mm -hmm. Just more comfortable. It's more comfortable to tell the lie that I don't measure up than it is to tell the truth just I'm more than enough. 
but I'm the present. (laughs) I'm the gift. God is a great gift giver. As the wife, I'm the gift. I'm the good thing. But it's easier for me to talk about my attitude or what I said or how I said it or the problems that I'm having. Like, it's easier for me to say those things as if those things are the only things that define me than it is for me to tell you the truth of what God said. I don't know how many of you can relate to that. I'd love to hear from you. Do you sometimes struggle? You can hit me in the DM on Instagram. You can respond to this um, on the comments. You can send me an email, contact at couragemolina.com. But if you know this is something that you're truly struggling with, I encourage you to enroll in the Courage Mastermind. It's going to remind you who you are. It's going to help you to let go of past mistakes, which we sometimes allow to define us. And we allow that to be the script of our present day. We allow what we've done in the past to dictate what we say to ourselves today. We allow the things that we say to ourselves to keep us from, you know, growing our faith to a place that's going to actually move mountains. If you're ready to improve your relationship with words, if you're ready to learn to speak the truth, learn to speak life, as a second language, then go to bit.ly slash courage mastermind.com and get on a call. If this is something you need to learn how to tell the truth as it relates to who you are and who God has called you to be. And then I'd love to see you in there. I pray that this uh, podcast has blessed you, that you are encouraged by it, that you will go out and start telling the truth today. And that when somebody tells a lie on you and talks to you and talks about you, like you not remarkable or marvelous, that you would set the record straight. That's what I hope you do. Shut it right on down. That's a whole nother podcast for another day. It's not just enough for us to say who we are and, and, and speak the truth of who we are, but it's also important for us to shut down anybody that's lying about who we are. Like, nope, don't say that about me. That's not true. Mm-mm. I don't care what they say. Mm-mm. It's not in alignment with the word of God. That's not true. You lying. You can't see well. You looking at it in the natural. You better look at it in the spiritual. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Shut them down a whole nother podcast for a whole nother day i love y'all hope this bless y'all i love to hear from you guys and until next time y'all go out and be strong and very courageous later